I think what we'll do is just get started, man. Because, you know, we don't have typically the video that like w what we'd usually do it right now. But I mean, the goal for me here is not to have everybody watch. It's more to help you out. So if people can hear you and hear your questions and your responses, I think we can still accomplish what we want to accomplish. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I know about you. Okay. Just, and this is just based on the information that you sent me. Um, I know that you're interested in growing your real estate business. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And so tell me, I mean, so what I need from you then is, is to help you get where you want to go is I need to know where you're at, right? So it's kind of like a map. It's kind of like drawing out a map. So tell me right now where you're at in your business. Um, how long have you been in real estate, first of all? Well, I've been a realtor since 2004. Okay. So you've been, through, you've been through the good and bad times. Yeah. When I first started, um, it was mostly for myself and family so okay. Really yeah. Okay. So you were just so doing I'm your close friends. family and friends when you just got into the business, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, so since you started in 2004 to where where we are today in 2018, um, tell me what your business looks like. How many how many how many deals did you do last year? And then how many deals are you working on this year? I didn't do any last. Year. Okay. So right now, I'm doing like fix and flip. You're doing fix and flips? Yeah. Okay, so you're buying homes okay. and you're you're using your real estate license to um, sell and not pay the 3% commission, correct? Correct. Okay. And um, so what was your goal? You didn't you said you didn't sell sell any in 2017. Have you sold homes in 2018? No, I just have this one that I'm um, um, renovating next. Okay, so essentially we're 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 starting from we're starting from scratch, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and so yeah. the the first thing I would tell you is, did you take some time? And this would be a really good time to do it for 2019. Did you take some time in 2017 to write out your goals for 2018? I didn't write them out. I okay. just had them in my head, but I didn't put them on paper. Okay. Well, the first thing to making them tangible is to getting them out of your head and getting them onto a piece of paper. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and if you want to right now, I can kind of walk you through a quick exercise to help get your goals for 2019 ready. Um, I love doing it in October because most people make, are making New Year's resolutions in January. Uh uh, and and we're already we're already into 2019 come uh, November December does that make sense because most of the stuff we do in real estate remember is usually 30 to 45 days out so the, there's a there's a there's a 30 to 45 day carryover so anything that you're doing in your business right now uh, will not you, you won't see the the fruits of that labor for 30 to 45 days you see you understand what I'm saying Okay, so for you, we're starting from scratch, and I, I, I love this because you've been at it since, you know, since 2004, um, and, and it sounds like you kind of you got in it as a hobby. Uh, you were just doing it to really, um, you, were doing it, you were doing it just kind of for fun, right? You were doing it maybe to save some money, to help friends and family, uh, and, and, and now you're realizing that you want to take your business to a different level. You know, I, I was a full-time banker, and I recently um, quit my job. <laughs> okay. And you know, because now my husband and I are empty nesters. Okay. So we started a business in this real estate to fix and flip because I always, always been um, really intrigued by real estate, always wanted to get in there, love going to open houses, love going to a model homes and looking at them, you know, that, and that's where my passion for real estate came from. Okay. 
So let, let's, let's do, what is your, is your goal? Are you looking to grow a real estate business through your investment company or are you actually looking to help buyers and sellers buy and sell? You said both? Are you with me? Yes. Okay, so you said both, right? Yes. Okay, so um, just a little background on me. Uh, I actually, I've had a license since 2002, okay? And um, I, I actually, I went into real estate with one of the top agents in, um, in my area in, in that time. And then I did real estate uh, just as a buyer specialist until 2009. And you know what happened in 2008, right? The market crashed. I wrote it out for as long as possible. And then uh, I put my license at a small brokerage and went back to corporate America and worked there. Uh, and I knew I'd get back into real estate. I just didn't know how and when, right? So in 2014, excuse me, in 2013, about this time right now, uh, I started calling the expired listings, okay? And you know what expired listings are, right? Yeah. Okay, so I started calling the expired listings, and by May of 2014, I had 44 homes listed for sale, and I went to my wife and I said, honey, is it okay if I quit my job? And she said, yes, because it was costing me more money to be in my corporate job than it was to be in real estate, okay? So I only tell you this not to boast or to brag, just to provide some context. That first year I sold 57 houses. The second year sold 104 houses. The third year sold 187 houses. And then last year sold 309 houses. Okay. And it's for all from expired listings? Uh, the first year when I did 57 units, about 80% of that business, yes, was from expired listings. Okay. Yeah, and, and obviously, so that was the pillar. Prospecting was the pillar that I built my business on, and I would recommend you do something very similar. It doesn't have to be expired listings, so I don't want you to freak out thinking that you have to call, that you now have to start calling expired listings, although I would recommend that you do that, right? Because you can create a saleable, excuse me, a scalable source of income when, you, when you're making phone calls. It, it's, it's, it's okay to have a business that is, um, is rich in receiving referrals and uh, and and it, through networking and relationships, but it's it's not it's not a scalable way to build a business because you can't you don't know when to depend on those right. You you the, the great right. thing about building a business around prospecting is that you know if you make a certain amount of phone calls, then you get a certain amount of contacts, and then you set a certain amount of appointments, and then from those those appointments you get a certain amount of sales. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so don't, not, not telling you that to overwhelm you, right? Because we are starting from scratch here. Um, haven't done any transactions uh, in the last 18 months uh, from, what I, from what I'm understanding. And so the first thing's first for you, right? We need to set goals. So this, it, it, during this phone call, what I want you and I to do is I want us to set some goals for 2019, okay? That's what we're going to do right now. Okay. Okay. So, and, and so the first goal, let, well, let's understand, you started to tell me your story, right? And so what I want to understand right now before we set your goals is your why. You told me you quit your job, so I'm assuming you have to work, right? Yeah. Okay, so you have to work, you have to provide income for your family. So yeah. really there's no excuse for not following through with the plan we're going to set forth today, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, so what, tell me what your why is then. Why do you get out of bed every day? Why do you do real estate? And, it, and I, I'm going to give you a hint here. It's not money. <laughs> it, it's really because I, I kind of love real estate. I like um, creating. I like um, uh, designing. I like... Um, just kind of get my hands wet with how to, um, like, uh, hang tile, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I, I, I can understand you and appreciate that. The money, I don't have it. <laughs> you don't have any yet, right? So, right. so the mindset is, 
is not that you don't have any money. It's that you're working on getting money, right? You understand yeah. what you need to do yeah. to get money. The money's out there, right? I mean, people in your marketplace, what marketplace are you in? Um, I'm in North Carolina. You're in North Carolina. Okay, so people in your marketplace, uh, and I know some, by the way, they're actively uh, selling a lot of property, right? So we know the business yeah. is out there. We just have to figure out how to bridge the gap for you to where you're at now and to having the life that you want. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay, so, and, and, and again, this all kind of ties back into what your, what your goals are gonna be for 2019. Let's, let's, let's set a goal financially and then we'll work our way backwards from there, okay? So what, 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 what do you need to make monthly in order to live comfortably? To make monthly? Yeah, how much uh, money do you need to make? At least 5,000. Okay, so you need to make you need to make five thousand dollars a month to live comfortably, correct? Yes. Okay, and what is the average sale price in your area? In my area, uh, it's about three fifty. Okay, that's awesome. So that that's really good news, right? So three fifty is your average sale price. So your average commission check is going to be somewhere around, let's just say, let's, let's just use $10,000 just because it's easy math. I know it's going to be a little bit more than that, but we'll just say it's $10,000, okay? So it's, let's just say your average commission check is $10,000, okay? So if you sell one property every two months, then you can get where you need to go, right? And that, that's obviously with the exception of having to pay your broker, but we're just going to do this for easy math, okay? So, and, and really what I want to do is just reduce it to ridiculous. So you need to sell, let's just say we can get you to two, one property every month. So every 30 days you can sell one listing. I know you can do that. That shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah. and so for you, if you did that, that would be $10,000 a month and that would be $120,000 a year. And that's gross, right? Because we know some of that's going to go to their broker. And some of that's going to go to uh, uh, expenses, right, for lead generation or, um, or admin cost or whatever that might be. Okay? So our goal for you right now for 2019 is for you to sell one house every month in the average price point of $350,000. And now we got to figure out how you're going to do that, right? So we can figure out the numbers pretty easily. So if, we, if, if you sold one house every month for the next 12 months, then that would be $120,000 gross income to you. Yes. And that would hit, that would then, and let's just say, you know, at the end of the day, you ended up with 50% of that, right? That would hit your $5,000 after expenses, that would hit your $5,000 per month to get you where you needed to be, right? So we can do that fairly easily. And the way we do that, right, we, what we know about this business is you don't have a business without leads. Okay? Right. And so right. Are, right. What, are you, what is your lead generation strategy right now, or do you even have one? Well, actually, here recently, I'm um, joining KB Corp, and I also have a mentor in place. Um, we haven't started yet because we're still um, getting the paperwork done. Okay. And so you, you signed up with KV Core, right, to generate buyer and seller leads? Yes. Okay. What company are you with? What? EXP. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and so I know because I work at EXP also that you got that KV Core system for your $50 a month tech fee, correct? Okay, awesome. And so your strategy, I guess, from this point forward uh, is to figure out what your budget is and how many leads can you generate for that budget, right? So what your cost, your lead acquisition cost is. That's what we need to figure out, right? So what, what, what is your budget right now? What, what are you able to spend through KV Core to generate buyer and seller leads? Oh. I haven't already thought about that. Okay. Because I thought that the KV Core was something that is in place for EXP agents. 
Okay, let's do this. Let's write down, right now on a piece of paper, goals for 2019, 12 homes sold at an average sale price of $350,000, okay? And, okay. and then a gross commission income, GCI, of $120,000. Let's just write that down, okay? Okay. And so I know that you're on an 80-20 split, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're, and, and I know that your commission is capped, or excuse me, your your uh, your your commission is capped with the XP at sixteen thousand dollars. So you can back sixteen thousand dollars, and then you're left with one hundred and four thousand dollars. Net, that's 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 net income uh, without any additional expenses other than you paying your cap. Correct. Correct. Okay. So that's a. That, can you live off one hundred and four thousand dollars? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's spend a little bit more money since I know you're still comfortable with $104,000, okay? So mm -hmm. let's let's talk about um, a lead generation strategy through KV, KV Core because you're right. EXP does offer uh, a free KV Core platform, which I believe if you pay for through another brokerage is somewhere in the ballpark of $1,100 to $1,500 per month. Um, mm -hmm. But you're getting it for $50 a month. Uh, which is your tech fee. So mm -hmm. you get that platform for free. And that basically provides you a, a CRM, right? So it's a client relationship manager, which then allows you to uh, generate leads into that platform and then remarket to those leads with um, uh, uh, properties that they found through their search. Uh, and then the system automates listings uh, that match that criteria until that consumer chooses not to view those anymore or until they buy a home, okay? Yes. So you and I know right now, we're, what we're going to do, since you've already decided to go deep on buyer lead generation, is talk a little bit more about buyer leads, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Because you, you can expect uh, with buyer leads, and and this is if you follow up like, like, it, it, like you're going to call leads between 9 and 13 times, right? Because... The, that that is the that is that's the sweet spot. We know conversions happen between call nine and call thirteen. Okay, and you're going to do that, and so your conversion rate on internet leads is anywhere from two to three percent. Okay, and that's 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 doing really good. That's that's that means you're calling like an animal. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so what we know then is that you need to generate for to get one sale per month you need to generate 100 leads from your platform, okay? And the, the reason I say 100, you're probably saying, well, my math is off, right? Because that, why would I need to do that? Because if you're saying I need, if the conversion rate is two to 3%, well, you think about it this way, okay? You will convert two to 3% of those leads, but not all of them will make it to the closing table, right? We unfortunately know that we're in an industry where things happen. Um, but it, for every hundred leads you generate, you should generate one sale from that, okay? And so when you talk to your marketing partner, uh, when you're launching your KV Core site, you need to understand that when you're having that conversation, you need to let him know that I need to generate 100 leads from my site, okay? Um, and, okay. and then you need to understand whatever the budget is for that and, and then plan accordingly. Um, okay. I'll tell you this also. I, I do like I, I like that you're you're generating buyer leads. Um, I would tell you that it is more cost effective to generate listing leads and more specifically expired leads uh, or for sell by owner leads, just because of the lead acquisition cost. And what I mean by that is we we know that we can sign up for a service like Red X or Vulcan 7 or Land Voice, right? And then they deliver the for sale by owner and expired data to our inbox every single day. And then all we simply do is we make that phone call, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to connect with that consumer. The good thing about those individuals, those for sale by owners and those expired listings, Audra, is they've already, re they've already, they already raised their hand and said, I'm interested in selling my property, right? 
So here, here's the difference in causing calling a buyer lead that converts at two to three percent, right? And again, that's real. That's a really good conversion rate. You'd have to be really good to do that. Is your conversion rate through expires and your conversion rate through calling buyer leads is going to be much higher through expired and for sale by owners. And I can tell you this from experience. So what we're talking about here is optimization. So what I mean by optimization is I can get a list of homeowners, right? And I can, I can put it into a dialer like uh, Mojo and I can call an entire neighborhood and I, I can ask people if they're interested in selling their home. That would be the, that would be the lowest conversion rate, right? Of phone calls that I could make. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the benefit of getting expireds for sell by owners and also buyer leads is those people have again raised their hand and at least admitted that they're interested in doing business or either finding a home or selling a home, right? Mm -hmm. So since, since you probably don't have a big budget right now, I would assume. And, uh, if you're going, if you're asking me where I should, where you should spend your money, where are you going to make the biggest impact? I would tell you that it's okay to go forward with the KV core, but it would not be my first choice of lead categories to call for you because it's going to be, it's going to cost you more money and it's going to take more of your time, energy and resources to call buyer leads than it would to call expireds and for sale by owners, right? So, okay. and, 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 and so let's go one step better than that even, okay? So one step better than that. The great thing about those lead categories, like I said before, is they've identified themselves as wanting to, you know, do real estate on some level, right? For sell by owners, we know they want to sell their house. They just don't want to hire a realtor, right? Uh, expireds, we know they want to sell their house and they've said, I want to hire a realtor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Buyer leads, when they come into the site, they're registering, they're doing a search. We know they're interested in looking at homes. We don't know when they're interested in buying though, right? So the average, the average conversion time for an internet lead is six months, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, I like the fact that you're taking action and moving forward with a lead generation strategy. I'm just not sure it's going to be the most effective. You're not going to get the best bang for your buck generating buyer leads right now because you're, 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 you're talking about a six month gestational process versus expireds and for sale by owners. Well, we know expireds, they're willing to list with an agent and they just had their home listed for sale. Okay. So for me, right. if I'm you, I'm hitting the expired leads first, actually second, I'll go to, I'll go to what's first here in a minute. Because I, I think you'll 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 be really good at that, um, just based on our conversation here. I think that you should hit expireds first, for sell by owners second, and then prioritize buyer leads third. And the the thing that I would put even before any of those is your sphere of influence. So here here's here's what's different about your sphere of influence that you're not getting with expireds for sell by owners and, um, and buyer leads, okay? <clears throat> what, what, what you don't have with expireds for sell by owners and buyer leads is you don't have a relationship. So, right. so what you have with your sphere of influence is you're, you're calling people that already know, like, and trust you and are probably gonna be willing to do business with you based on knowing those three things. Right. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. when you when you make that call and you say, you know, hi, this is Audra Moses. Uh, I was just reaching out to you. I just wanted to, to let you know I've got my real estate license and I'm looking to grow my business this year. Would you do me a favor if you know or if you come across anybody that's looking to buy or sell, would you mind referring them to me? Right. That's an easy phone call to make. Everybody wants to help you. Right. Everybody. Okay. I don't care if they're a, if they're a true friend, they're going to want to help you. And the easy thing about making that phone call, Audra, is they already know you, right? When you call an expired lead or a for sale by owner or a buyer lead, those people don't know you. 
right? So not not only do you have to not only do you have to try and set an appointment with them, before you can even do that, you got to build a relationship because no one's going to right. let you come over to their house or let them show you properties if if you can't build rapport with them. Right. Okay. So my recommendation to you would be to uh, and we use Vulcan 7. Uh, we like that system a lot. You don't necessarily have to use that. Uh, I would say use anything you're comfortable with. You can also use Red X is another good system. These, uh, and I think Red X might even be more affordable. So, Red X. yeah, Red X. And they will deliver the data to you every single morning. Uh, and you can start making those calls and building a database. Now, where you can use KV Core here, because that will still come into play, is in most cases, when you make an initial phone call to an expired or for sale by owner, mm -hmm. they're usually not ready to do business at that time, okay? Now, some of them are, and those are great, but we know that conversions, based on the data, that conversions don't happen until between dials nine and 13, and that's, that's converting the lead into an appointment. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do then, if we're having that data entered into, um, if we're getting that data from either Red X or Vulcan 7, is we're making our calls. And I, I'll tell you what, I did it at 745 every single morning. I thought it was the best time to call. I know some people won't call before 8 o'clock. But I, 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 I can tell you, I, I made... I made more contacts at 7.45 in the morning than I ever made after 8. And guess what? They were always excited about talking to me, right? Because I was the first agent to call. You know what I mean? When you're the ninth agent to call or even the fourth or fifth, they're tired of hearing from real estate agents. You know what? And so if you, if, if you can be disciplined enough, and listen, to do this, you have to really want it, Audra. You have to really want it. You got to be at your computer at 7:30 and you got to be ready to go. You know what I mean? You got to be in the right mind for, mindset and you have you got to be ready to turn it on at 7:45. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so like I love the fact that you took initiative today and you called me um, to get some direction. It is people like you that I'm seeking to 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 help because I know that I can give something back to you. So if you'll take the initiative on what we've talked about today, and, and, and again, it doesn't matter which system that you're using as long as you're using it, okay? So the only thing that you need is the data. So if you can get a, if you can get a service to provide you the data every single day, you can make those phone calls Monday through Friday or, or Monday through Sunday, doesn't matter to me, um, and what what'll what'll eventually happen is you'll start to build a pipeline. And the reason why I like calling expireds and for sale by owners better is because when you own the listing, you own the buyer, right? So mm -hmm. when you when you when you list a home for sale, you're employing every agent in your marketplace to go out and sell that. And what one listing should generate one buy, one closed buyer every single time. Now, that, that may be less true in a market where when you list a property, sometimes they're sold in six minutes or six hours or six days. Um, but what we're starting to notice in our marketplace now is that it's, it's cooling off, it's plateauing. And so this is a great time while other agents are turning it off and getting ready for the holidays. Audra's going to go out and take my advice, and she's going to start right now. Your 2019 starts as soon as we get off this phone call, right? Right. And you're going to go out and make a hundred grand this year, right? Right. And now you know what to do. And 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 well, you remember that? I don't know. I don't know if you remember this growing up. There used to be a a, a show on called GI Joe. And after G.I. Joe was on, they would always say, and knowing is half the battle. And, and it is true. Knowing is half the battle. And so for you, yeah. now you know. So now you don't have any excuses. Right. And, and so, right. like, now you've got something tangible on paper, right, that says, right. 
I'm going to go out and sell one house each month. I'm going to go out, and your goal, right, is 12 homes next, ne next year. So for 2019, right. you're going to go out and sell 12 homes, and that starts today. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right, and listen, you feel free to call or email me anytime, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm here to help, and, I, and I, I'm... Okay, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that, Mike. Don't get sick of me calling. <laughs> I'm not. Listen, I want to hear about your progress, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you so right. much, Audra. And listen, good luck, thank okay? Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Audra. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.